Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, bringing you a microscope shootout. We use microscopes all the time, and here I've got a very cheap, affordable model and a very nice, expensive model. Let's see the difference. So starting with this cute little device, uh, all my cool buddies on Instagram have been getting them, um, Saunders and Kelvin and all kinds of guys. This is a Coolatron, uh, I get it from Amazon, it's about 150 US dollars, and it's good. It's really good. And then over here, we have a Leica A60 that a friend actually gave to me as a gift. Super generous, super nice. I've had this for about three years now, and I adore it. It's, it's my baby. I love I want one at home. Um, it's so nice. But it is about $1,700 US. Huge price difference. Over 10 times more expensive. Is it 10 times better? Yeah. But do you need it? Maybe not. So let's dig in, let's get some, um, this guy here naturally can record video because it's a digital uh, camera. So you put a little SD card in the back, you can record video, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, but also it has a screen, you can see what's going on. This does not have video, there's no camera and there's no screen. So you are looking through the eyepieces and you're on your own, you, can, you can't show anybody. With this one, I can walk up with some guys and I can be like, yeah, look, look, there's something wrong. Um, I want you to look at this tiny detail and I can poke at the screen and that's actually very, very helpful. Whereas with this one, you're by yourself. You can't show your buddy what you're looking at. Um, and that's, I find, I, I struggle with that a little bit because I'm like, yeah, look, you look through here and then I'll look through here and I set it all up. Um, so there's pluses and minuses to both. So I find that over the past three years, well, I've only had the Swiss for about a year and a half, but I use this thing most of the time for Swiss parts because the little things that we machine, that we turn down are very small and the details are tiny and the Swiss can hit details that this can see. So I'm always looking under the microscope. So I just moved it here for the video, but normally it's parked over there by the Swiss and we use it there for everything. But this is kind of how I use it. Like, depending on the working height of it, I tend to lean over and be kind of uncomfortable, but also kind of power stance here. And I look through. Now this is a um, stereoscope. So both of your eyeballs are actually seeing two different, I don't know, images, uh, like a left and a right, and then your brain puts them together. So it literally gives you this three-dimensional view. You, you put it under there and it doesn't look like a regular microscope. It looks like it's alive. It looks very hyper-realistic. Um, when we put the camera on here, you won't really be able to see that. Not, not as good as my eye sees it. So, I mean, it, the, the quality to me is phenomenal. I can see every little speck of dust and dirt and hair and, oh. So, you know, I, I use it because I'm looking at the little chamfers, I'm looking at burrs, I'm looking at details, I'm looking at surface finishes, um, threads inside the hole, all kinds of stuff. And, it just gives you that magnification, that view deeper into the world so that you can see things closer up. And you get the same thing out of this $150 model, except as you see here, you, you're kind of left with a, a digital image. And it's, it's fine, it's cool, and I can even zoom in more and more and more and more, but then your focal range goes crazy. Um, but it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's, you can tell it's digital and it's kind of like, like computerified. But what we're looking at, it's not bad. And then I'm lifting it up and down because your focal range is, is tiny. So you're constantly kind of, uh, you can also tell the, what do you call that Fraser? The shutter? Yeah. Look at that wobble as I'm just kind of jittering my hands. Okay, so we're recording on the Coolertron right now. So I'm lifting up and down. On this pivot, we, um, we ground the face of it. It's weird to see all the colors too, the little blues and yellows and whatever in the reflection. Um, and you can see the dirt. This has just been kicking around for a few months. The dirt in the things, you can see the engraving quality. You can see the little swirly bit at the bottom of the engraving um, where the tip of the tool has no surface footage. So it's just kind of like scraping. That's very normal. Let's look at the chamfer. Got kind of a double chamfer thing going on here. Nice little radius at the top. And then the back chamfer. Actually, I machine it this way. 
nice little inside chamfer there. That's, I'm really happy with that. Um, the face finish, I want to get a really nice finish on that face. A little radius at the bottom. And the turned finish here, you can see how it's kind of groovy. Very normal. I think I'm too close here, I want to back up. There we go. And you can even see clamping marks from the lathe. Um, the lighting in this Coolatron is annoying. It's, I, I don't know, I, I gotta figure out, like it's got the front light, the little very weak, very dim little uh, ring LED, and then you've got these somewhat powerful outside lights, and it's, it's very harsh. And I find the whole thing's in shadow or glare the whole time. So here you can see my uh, surface finishes of the chamfers and the, the locating features. And it lets me really dig in and, and understand what's going on. I can also put it on the table and I can zoom down until it lines up. So then at least you're rigid. You can see a little bit of, uh, I guess, chatter on the face finish. And then I can zoom down again, or uh, focus down. So depending on how, how we want to see it is how we move the part around. You can even see the bottom of the inside of the hole there. It's kind of cool. It's still dirty. Or if we flip it over, then we can see the face finish um, without all the jigglies. Look at that. So I can I can zoom out so that we get the whole thing in focus. Like it's not a bad image quality, all things considered. So as I, as I introed with, if you don't have a microscope yet, this will change your world. It'll make you see things that you don't want to see because now you will have to fix those problems that you see. So be careful with that. But I love being able to see deeper into things, um, whether it's surface finish or tolerance or burrs or anything. And of the two, I mean, kind of everybody should probably have one of these. And everybody who's super serious about image quality and, and just comfort should have one of these. Um, I find that if, if I'm gonna like, sometimes I'll spend 10 minutes looking under it, trying to analyze a fine detail. And if I'm comfortable physically, like if I'm sitting on a stool or something, this is very comfortable to, to use. Um, and like, and just look at parts. And I find I have really nice control. I find there's a lot of room to work. Um, the eyepieces are nice and I get to, I get this three-dimensional stereo uh, view through it, and it just, it's comfortable. I like using this more. Um, I've had it for three years, and I've only had the other one for like a month or two, so maybe that's part of it too, but the, also, I was talking about the lighting on the other one. This one has a ring light that's diffused with like a frosted diffuser, and it's just a really nice, they know what they're doing. This is Leica. Leica's a, an amazing company. They make cameras and all kinds of stuff. Um, they know what they're doing. And I always keep it on max brightness. You can turn it down, you can turn it off, but um, I, I, I am more comfortable under this microscope and I feel like I see things better because they literally look real. It's, it's, it's like I'm smaller and I'm looking at this part, like a honey, I shrunk the kids kind of thing. It's right there. Whereas this, you're kind of removed from it because it's digital and you get the image shake and you get you know, the, the things you don't like. I'm gonna hit record right now. So if we look at this bearing under here, I can go a bit closer. But the, I mean, the image quality is, is quite nice. I don't know, once I get my focus right, that's clear, that's crisp. You can see all the flappies, you can see all the burrs. This is the kind of stuff that's hard to see by eye. I, all those little flappies we just looked at, I don't really see them, you know, and I have good vision. I, I don't see them right now. But you put them under here, and they're like, holy cow, 
now I can't not see them. And then you start to think to yourself, okay, everything's going under the microscope from now on, but you gotta set the limit somewhere. Um, it's just such a handy device. Like, it's a view into the smaller world. If you wanna make tight precision parts with really nice surface finishes and just cool stuff, like if we look at this uh, Damasteel pattern, let's get a look at that under the microscope, under the Coolitron. Get the focus just right. You can start to see what's actually going on. You have different waves of material because they're made of two different kinds of steel. So in this view, the dark one is one type of steel and the light ones are a different type of steel and they're folded and forged together. And I've had this thing for five years. You can see all the scratches I put into it. You can look at your edge quality. All you knife guys, you sharpening guys, um, would love one of these for sharpening because you get to like, you got your wicked edge, you want to put a super, super polished edge on it. You can actually see what's going on. You can see every nick and chip in the blade. And that's super helpful, but also kind of aggravating because you're like, nothing's perfect anymore. But that's my life. Okay, let's put the, um, a friend made this for me, or a fan, and sent it to me. It's specifically made for this microscope for my Samsung S9 phone. I gotta take the case off. Um, he machined it. I think this would be a perfect 3D printing uh, job. And then I gotta, I gotta fold down the eyepiece. And then I put it on. Now I've certainly handheld the phone up to the eyepiece like a lot and it works very well. Um, but this gives you that kind of rigid thing. So let's also 3D printed this. Um, I'm not sure who invented this, but I know I got the file from John Saunders and then I put my logos on the side. This works really good. It lets you put objects on to be able to um, film or look at and you don't have to like hold it. So I use it sometimes, not for everything. Okay, let's hit record on this. Make sure we're kind of in frame. Sometimes I can zoom in a little bit and I'll get rid of the uh, vignetting around the outside. On that. So I, right now we're looking at the 3D print. Um, with this, you have the up and down kind of vertical zoom. And then you have fine focus moving the whole carriage up and down, letting you kind of really dial in that surface. But let's find my pen here. So I don't, I don't know recording image quality wise, which one looks better, but even through my phone, my phone's got a better camera than this little Coolitron has probably. Um, that looks pretty fantastic. You can see the scratches from the tumbler, the surface finish, um, every little, like these scratches are very much on purpose and we want them to all look perfect. So we can go over here to the slider focus in on that. You can see again that trough in the bottom of each groove where the tip of the ball mill is just dragging. No surface footage. Um, you just get to really see the details. So maybe you can start to see why I have and use a microscope for almost like for so many things. You can see the scratch pattern on the button where it enters the, uh, the threaded sleeve. Let me activate the button. You can do stuff under the microscope so you can see what's going on. Let me zoom out a little bit and focus in. So uh, yeah, oftentimes I'll, I'll activate an assembly under the microscope and I'll be able to see what's really going on, what's interfering, what's, what's um, hitting. Super handy. You can see our lapped blade finishes. I'm to find my focus here. That's the scratch pattern. So we're on my phone right now. If Fraser, you look at that, it looks like a mirror, right? Like if you put, I don't know, can you see the mirror of that? 
it's incredible, incredibly shiny, but it's not perfect. You look under the microscope, like we're doing now, and you see how scratchy that is. It, it looks horrible, but it's not. Yeah. The microscope just brings the world smaller. It makes you an ant so that you see everything tighter and tighter. And uh, yeah. I don't know, I love microscopes. <laughs> They're cool. They're super handy, super helpful. Um, what in my dream, dream world, I want this with a TV screen that I can turn off and on. Just a 17 inch monitor would be plenty. Um, that way I can use it and I can look normally, you know, through the stereoscope and, and have it be hyper realistic. Uh, but there could also be a screen up here. So Pierre or Angelo or you or whatever could, could stand there and watch the screen and see exactly what I'm doing. I get to be in the zone. I don't have a, a camera in my face. I just get to be here and do my thing. And if I want an audience or if I need an audience, then I get that. Um, so this one, it was about $1,700 US. They make the uh, S9i model, which is 3,500, maybe 4,000 with the stand and everything. That has a built-in camera, records in 1080p. Um, I'm sure it's a quite decent quality camera. That's a lot of money. That's more than double the cost of this thing. Just to get you a camera, um, the child inside me wants it bad, but that's a lot of money, you know? So I bought two of these Coolatrons, um, one for me, one for Eric to have in the front shop. Eric's already using it a lot. Eric doesn't need this. Eric needs this. So it's kind of the perfect example where he can just look under the part and be like, oh yeah, that scratch is really bad. Or, you know, John, why is this, uh, why is there a mark right here on the part? And then he can show me and I can be like, oh yeah, there is a mark on the part. Okay, I should probably fix that. Good catch. And it's just a handy device. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's allowed us to make better parts. Like when you look at something and it looks perfect, it's because it looks really, really good magnified. And that's why it's, it, it is good. It has to be that good. It's like when you make calibrated measuring equipment, it has to be 10 times more accurate than the thing you're measuring. That's kind of a rule that gauge makers have, I believe. Um, we're like the, the means is 10 times better than the end use or something. So being able to see things under, I think this one's a 30 times magnification and this one can do a lot more digitally. Um, it just kind of changes things. It puts, uh, puts a whole new spin on precision parts and, uh, and how they work. I remember as, we, as kids, Eric and I would go up to our old CRT TV or tube TV or whatever, and you put your face right up to it and you can see all the little separate colors, right? If you've never done that, this is the screen. This is a picture. If I scroll, you see the colors changing. Those are different images on my home screen. There, word. What's that say? Camera. They're like little micro pixel LEDs that change shade and color and whatever. You, you forget this stuff. You take it for granted, you know? That's cool. And that's what this looks like up close. So if, if you like to know what's really going on with the parts you're making or the thing, it doesn't have to be manufacturing, it could be anything. Um, my kids played with this at home and had a blast. This is amazing. It, it really is. And for 150 bucks, like, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, if you're serious about the work that you do and you want to see it closer, this is the cheapest, goodest, bestestestest option to, to do that. It's, it's really good. Um, so 99 guys out of 100 are gonna be very happy with this, very satisfied. But then, then there's this, a lot more money. I mean, I'm kind of biased because I got it as a gift and I'm super grateful to Alan for giving that to me, but I, I can't go back now. I'm spoiled. This is, this is my current of microscopes. This is like, I only want to use this but it's by the Swiss most of the time. I have the Coolatron by the Kern, so I've been using the Coolatron a much, uh, a bit, and it's, it's good. It's just not as good. So, yeah, at the end of the day, great, amazing. Both are useful. Both answer the question of, is there a burr? Is there a bad spot? Did the, is there carbide left in there still? Um, whatever you want to answer, but they're both amazing. Microscopes are awesome, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, take care. Bye.